Welcome back to Showbiz Insider, your entertainment news roundup. So the 12th edition of the Dubai Jazz Festival brought back the theme of much more than jazz. And it certainly was that, bringing together international artists from all genres, from jazz to blues to pop. And we got to hang out with the musicians. Take a look. The main gigs included Oli Merz, Santana and Jamie Cullen. And the Jazz Garden featured international jazz legends. Eight days of pure entertainment and a unique take on jazz, pop and rock, making its 12th year the biggest edition ever. How has the vision for the Jazz Festival progressed from last year to this year? Well, uh, what we've done is we added like a new series, which is the Jazz Garden, Leg the Legends Edition. Uh, we have more jazzy le uh, legends uh, playing at the festival this year because we've been hearing a lot of people like complaining, we don't have jazz, we don't have jazz. So now, here you go, we have eight uh, new acts uh, that have never been here and they are really legends. So this is one of the things that we're doing this year. So it's not just about jazz, it's about pop, it's about rock. What are the, some of the highlights of the whole week? Well, the slogan uh, says it all. It's, uh, our slogan is a unique take on jazz, pop and rock. So I know the jazz festival, it's called the jazz festival. But again, it's not only about jazz, it's about uh, quality entertainment. This is how uh, we define our jazz festival. Mers, the UK X Factor sensation, brought Valentine's Day loving to Dubai with hits from his double platinum albums, including Handle My Heart and Troublemaker. I can lose, I'm in, love with you. in just three years, Ollie has produced four number one hit singles, selling 10 million records worldwide. His last album, Right Place, Right Time, shot to the top of the charts, giving him the biggest week one sales by a male artist in 2012. We caught up with him to talk Breaking America and loved up lyrics. So Ollie, we're so excited to have you here in Dubai. Tell me how you're feeling about the gig tonight. You know, I feel so good about it. I can't wait. You know, um, it's great to do gigs and you know, especially in Dubai. I mean, what a great place to be, great country. Um, you know, to be in the UAE is brilliant and um, you know, I'm looking forward to it. So last year was like really massive for you. I know you started off with your American tour. Do you kind of feel like you've broken America now? Not really, no. I mean, I've got a long way to go over there. I mean, I think I've made a good impression over there with my first single, Troublemaker, and um, Dance Mix. Yeah, that was huge over there. Yeah, so everything's done well over there for me. I can't complain. Um, hopefully, I want it to, to increase and be better. Um, you know, and hopefully gigs like this will increase the fan base as well, coming over to a different country and different people. So, no, I'm just hoping people enjoy, you know, the you know my music and stuff and hopefully next year when you know when I tour again and with new singles hopefully I have more success in in, in, uh, in different countries and in the summer last year you were working with Robbie Robbie Williams what was that experience like Brilliant. Robbie's great you know what he's a top man and we had a great time together you know we're good mates now more than we was even before which we were good mates so no he's a really close guy and he's really close to my heart as well I really I really enjoy him as a person and love hanging around with him he's great so Talking about hearts, it is Valentine's Day, so I just want to take you back to one of your singles from last year, Dear Darling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it about anybody? I mean, tell yeah, me about I mean, that. We, we, we actually wrote a song, I was talking about this earlier actually, I wrote a song and um, it was basically, we, we sort of love the fact of writing letters, we always wrote letters to people before, I mean I've wrote letters to girls before, tell how much I love them. Love letters? Yeah, we love letters, you love, girls love letters, right? We love love letters. I used to write love letters to girls and um, you know, and obviously, in the song we wanted to we had the idea of saying dear darling and it's like please excuse my writing and it's about how you're trying to write down and you feel and it's about her someone that left you it wasn't about any experiences we had we just felt like it was quite a lovely song and, and so tell me a little bit about the songwriting process like what does influence you as an artist as a writer i mean everything does every day-to-day -day life um you know sometimes people always say is your album about everything you've been through i mean like not really you know it's more about everything you know Sometimes it'd be about, it'd be about what my mum and dad are going through or what my friends are going through. I mean, I can't experience everything. I haven't experienced everything, so I can't physically write about everything that I've been up to. So it's trying to come up with something, a really good idea and something that's clever and fun and people that people can relate to it. Um, so that's kind of what I you know, try to do with that album, um, with every album that I do, every song. And with the new album, like what direction do you sort of see your music going in? Just again, developing it, you know, make it even more, um, you know, better than what it is. I mean, you know, the last three albums have been incredible. This album I feel could be even better, the best I've done. Um, so I'm just waiting to, to, yeah, I'm writing some great songs at the moment. Just want to take it to a step level further. I mean, make it cooler, make it more fun, more exciting. 
um, and have bigger hits. So, um, no, there's so much room to grow and I'm really excited about this next record. collaborating with can't tell yeah can't tell you no we've got loads of um we've got loads of uh, interesting ideas coming up there's, there's, i reckon there'll be two people on the album that i'll be collaborating with but um not just yet we'll see so just to wrap it up it is valentine's day is there anyone that you want to send a lot of love to <laughs> always send a lot of love to my mum i hope you're having a good valentine's day and i hope my dad's taking you out <laughs> And the teenage heartbreak wasn't over, with British chart-topping sensation The Wanted rocking the stage. The five-piece band have had two Brit Award nominations, a sellout nationwide behind Bars Tour, and are currently working with label Def Jam Records. With their pop, dance and house influences, they've been dominating the airwaves with two number one hits, including Glad You Came. Their third studio album, entitled Word of Mouth, was released in November after their hit singles Chasing the Sun and Walks Like Rihanna. This ultimate busy boy band have put filming for their second season of their own reality show that's The Wanted Life on hold for now. And complimenting the headline acts and bringing proper jazz and blues to the lineup was the uber cool Jazz Garden. Plus, this year, the Legends Edition specifically caters to jazz fanatics and brought Grammy award winning artists like Larry Carlton. <laughs> I think the variety of music that, that's got on here this, this week is fantastic and it's going to continue all the thing. Larry Carlton, who I'm listening to now, you can probably hear in the background, is just phenomenal. He just makes the guitar sing. It's unbelievable. It's fantastic. It's really good atmosphere. The all-time guitar great has been nominated 19 times for Grammy Awards, with 30 albums to his credit, and having performed on over 100 albums that have gone gold or platinum, Larry Carlton has set the standard for artistry that spans three decades. Talking smooth jazz, international recording artist and master saxophonist, LeBron summed up the essence of jazz. Well, I'm a smooth jazz saxophone player, so when I define smooth jazz, it's kind of a mixture of R&B with uh, a little bit of the old school jazz that you hear. So I'm a little bit more modern, a little bit more pop inspired and R&B inspired, and that's really how I define my style. So. And what was your like personal journey into music? Is this something you've been doing since you were like five? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I started really young, started as a kid, and I never really knew I would be on a big stage like this, but I was just one of those kids that loved playing my saxophone. I practiced all day and really just fell in love with music itself, and here I am. What do you think it is about jazz music that really gets such a wide variety of people going? Well, you know, I think jazz is just, it's its very unique art form, you know, its it's been around for a long time, but I think it also, it allows you to express different moods, so whether you're having a good day or a bad day, happy, sad, there's always a jazz song that can really express that for you. Even though there's no lyrics in it, the music itself really just touches people, so that's one of my favorite things about it. Legendary music icon Santana closed the festival in rock and roll Hall of Fame style, leaving our Dubai jazz fans in jazz heaven. A brilliant week in music. No wanted, no wanted, no wanted. So many megastars in the Emirates this month, not forgetting the Rolling Stones in the capital and also all those artists at Red Fest Dubai. Now coming up after the break guys, we're going to get a little more street and introduce you to the new graffiti movement taking over the city. Mm -hmm.